Hello everyone, it's Rick back with another video and I know I kept you waiting for a while but I was also in another tournament, like it's incredible for me, um, just going from tournament to tournament and actually man, I'm super happy with chess right now and just the way how many tournaments there are and always competing and stuff like that, it really excites me and uh, can't wait for my next one, that is in, um, it's gonna start in Less than a week, that that's sure. It's gonna be a match per week type uh, of tournament like I had before last year, or this year I should say. So yeah, let's see. Today we're gonna keep looking at um, Family Cam Open. I think this is gonna be the last match though of Family Cam Open because I've lost the two games. Um, the final two games of, of the tournament, which it's very unfortunate because they are so they were super exciting, but um, yeah, let's keep going. So, my opponent is Sergey Demyanchuk. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He's 1790, and yeah, I was playing the black pieces and I decided to go for d6. So, the Pirk he goes d4, and I go uh, knight f6. Uh, pretty standard knight c3 and here I go e5 so my opponent takes I take he takes my queen I take his queen and he plays plays bishop c4 and we enter this end game studied it uh, for a long long time uh, I've analyzed it a lot and Although it seems like it's very bad for black, actually it's pretty, pretty solid and it's kind of hard to crack. Um, so yeah, after bishop c4, I play king e8, which just looks like horrible, like what am I doing, but it actually works, trust me, you'll see. Uh, knight f3, I go bishop d6, protecting the, protecting the pawn on e5, and um, he goes bishop g5, so yeah, so far just normal develop from white you know he's got uh, way more pieces developed but I think I'm pretty solid still so here I just play knight bd7 protecting the knight on f6 he castles long I play a6 and here I mean a6 is just a move that uh, has two purposes so first of all I want to prevent knight b5 can be annoying attacking this bishop also, I kinda am preparing b5 in the future to, you know, gain a, a tempo on the bishop and who knows, maybe gain a tempo on the knight, just develop my bishop to b7 maybe. I just want to stay flexible and I want to do some waiting moves that are kind of good to my position just to see uh, what his idea is here. So it, it's a little bit of a waiting game. So... He goes rook h to e1, and um, I go h6, kicking the bishop, or not uh, just kicking the bishop, just asking a question, you know, what do you want to do with that bishop? So he goes h4, and I mean, okay, g5, let's go aggressive, you know, bishop g3, and here, knight h5, and here I already love my position, because, you know, my pieces are coming to life, I'm taking some space with my pawns, you know, even though my king is in the middle, we trade the queens, there's nothing going on. My king isn't under the under attack. My pieces, you know, they they will eventually go to better squares and um, yeah, let's see what uh, what went on here. So my opponent goes knight d5 and here I remember that um, there were uh, some positions where that I've studied that I really want to have my king go on uh, g7. Uh, when he plays knight e5, so here I was just like, okay, I have time to take, I don't have to take the bishop right now, because this bishop isn't going anywhere, uh, literally has no squares, so I just go king f8, and I'm like, okay, let me just put my king to in g7, it's a good square for the king, and then I'll proceed to uh, kick his knight from d5, and you know, maybe take the bishop, maybe not, um, and yeah, he goes bishop b3, which I don't really understand, uh, I go king g7, following my plan, 
And here he goes h4, which is a bad move. And here, this is what I was almost uh, wanting him to do because now I take the bishop and he gets double pawns and I get to play g4 with tempo and his knight has to go back. So I just fixed his pawns and, uh, you know, I gained some space. And here, you know, here it was um, knight c5 was a bad move. In uh, It was a very bad move, honestly. Here, you know... I, I was too um, was too excited to just uh, attack his bishop and create maybe like just gain the bishop pair you know and and uh, I should have stopped uh, knight c5 because knight c5 knight c4 uh, excuse me knight c4 is kind of annoying going uh, after this bishop and the problem is that uh, once he just takes my bishop like this my pawn gets I get a backward pawn here on d6 and my pieces are not really ready to protect that pawn and I, I kind of don't want to get that pawn, that weak pawn on d6 so I should have just played c uh, b5. b5 is a good move because it stops knight c4 and also plans on just developing the bishop like I said earlier. But I was, I you know, I got uh, too excited and I played carelessly knight c5 and after knight c4 I realized that yeah, this position is not that good anymore because, you know, the threat of taking the bishop on, e on d6 is kind of, it's kind of huge in my opinion. Um, I take the bishop, he takes, so he gets two stacks of double pawns and I go bishop e6. I thought that this was the best, anticipating that he would take the bishop, I would take with the pawn and after this fork, I just played rook a d8, you know, and if he wants to take my bishop, so be it, you know, probably I'm just gonna take, I'm definitely taking with the pawn, because there's no other option, uh, and you know, in I want to control the d5 square and maybe push uh, d5 myself in the near future, but he plays rook d2, kind of doubling on the uh, d-file, with plans of doubling on the d-file. I played uh, rook d7, attacking the knight, and he um, he plays knight d5. And here knight d5, you know, the question is, of course, do I trade my bishop for the knight? Do I not? And honestly, I just thought that, um, like, that was a good trade for me, because that knight is very annoying, and my bishop isn't really looking at uh, anything, you know. So I took, it took with the rook, and I played king f6. You know, I want to bring my king to e6 to control d6 and also to just centralize my king. He plays rook f1, okay, I go king e6, and here he plays c4. And, you know, this was a bad move apparently, but um, it's kind of hard to say why. Because uh, for me, it just looks normal. I played a rook c8 and here he played uh, king c2 and here I spent a lot of time up oh, by the way like about about this in in about this position I had probably like 40 or I had probably a lot like 50 to 55 minutes maybe 52 something like that and my opponent had one hour and 20 minutes still so yeah it was kind of annoying you know it's always annoying to play um players that are playing way too fast, um, but in general it uh, should be a good thing for for me because if they're playing too fast they're probably not making the most accurate moves and you can try to take your time and punish it, but yeah. So here, you know, I was calculating the obvious b5, but for some reason I didn't really like b5. I thought that after uh, king c3 I didn't really want to take take because I'm just undoubling his pawns and this pawn is super weak on a6 and I felt like this was very bad for me um, and yeah I thought that if I just um, you know doubled the rooks on on the c file for example I thought that he could bring his king uh, into the position and it would be awkward because this king uh, you know is, is coming to a5 and, um, you know, maybe taking the pawn on a6, and then he, her, his rooks, 
you know, start uh, infiltrating the position, maybe rook a1 or even rook f5, rook h5, even though I always have a uh, rook h8, but I, I felt like this wasn't good. But here, it is completely winning um, after takes and, uh, you know, takes here because, like, yeah, I'm attacking his, his pawn, so uh, after... He can't really go here, right? He can't really go here because I just it's just a free pawn. And um, yeah, I didn't calculate... I didn't realize this uh, bad calculation by my part. Honestly, this is completely winning. So here he, he probably had to make an ugly move like uh, rook d2. And, uh, you know, maybe here... <laughs> yeah, here I'm tre threatening to take because, you know, the pawn is defender. So, you know, b5 was actually the best move. I miscalculated some some important details and um, yeah, it just happens. So here I decided to play rook c6, which is not terrible, but you know, I just missed an opportunity to be way better than my opponent in this rook ending. He played king c3 and uh, here I was like, okay, b5 here and uh, it's kind of weird that I played b5 here but I didn't want to play b5 the other time here played b5 I thought that after king b4 with the same idea I thought that here I would just take and after maybe takes here um, just rook check honestly that's what I thought and he probably had to go back and I thought that uh, this was good with uh, rook coming to b6 and it's it's weird because it's almost the same as before so I don't know. Sometimes during chess matches, it's hard to to explain uh, what is going through uh, my mind. Honestly, sometimes I can't explain my decisions. After rook f five, and here I I I consider this move a lot. Uh, of course, uh, king uh, rook f five, you know. But here I I just played f six, and if it goes rook h five, I I just always have rook h seven and. His pawn is protected, this rook is doing nothing here, and, you know, the game goes on. So here he plays king d3, and king d3 is a big, big mistake because of uh, b takes c4, b takes c4, and then rook c, no, rook c, no, because he has b3, so rook b, b7 here. And I don't know, maybe he just goes here, and maybe I double up here. Yeah, it's it's got it starts to get very 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 bad for my pawn because of here and yeah, the pawn start fall falling and uh, and yeah, it gets um, it gets very very complicated for him. But I played um, after here I played uh, rook c five, which honestly it's just a really bad move and it's kind of hard to explain, but I felt like. Uh, with this game playing black black pieces against uh, a almost eighteen hundred player, I thought that uh, like a draw would be a good um, result, and I my moves just um, reflect the way I was thinking, you know, because my moves are really like trying to find draws, and you know I didn't even consider that here I was completely winning and uh, I missed so many chances, but let's see. I played rook c5, rook f1, I played rook b7, and uh, here he took, I took with the pawn, and he played rook a6, attacking my pawn. First I gave a check, and after king moves to e3, I play uh, rook d6. And uh, he takes, I take, and he plays rook a5, and here, like, just look at this position, you know, white as no business ever winning this endgame, in my opinion, because, like, his pawns are so bad, like, he has two stacks of double pawns, and everyone knows that this is not good, but I wasn't thinking, like, oh, this is good opportunity for me to strike and get the win, I was like, no, this is very solid, I probably can get a draw here. Played rook b6, defending the pawn, he plays rook a7. So here, clearly, my opponent is trying to get winning chances. He really wants to win. And um, he's not in the position to do that. Uh, you know, of course, he's threatening to come here on h7 or maybe first g7. And then when I push h5, go away. 
rook h7, but here I just played c4, I was like, okay, let's try to make something happen, you know? Uh, he plays b4, which I, I thought it was really bad, I thought that he really had to take, take and maybe play something like um, rook here, or something like that, attacking this pawn, and if I, if I take here, he, he takes here, um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is still completely lost for white, and after b4, um, I'm way better. And here I went like rook d6. I went like, okay, I'm looking at this check and nothing is gonna stop me. And here he plays rook a6, rook a3 actually. So he goes on the defense. He, he admits that the move rook a7 wasn't the best because he has to go back to defend. And here I thought for a while, you know, my opponent still had like one hour and 20 minutes. I'm not even kidding. Uh, he was pretty much blitzing almost all the moves. I had like 40 minutes, 42, 41 maybe. And here I was just looking at the best move to draw this position. It's very, very bad. I mean, um, but I actually ended up finding a, a winning move while looking for a drawing move. I um, played rook d3 check. And... Apparently this is like super good. The engine on low depth doesn't even like see this immediately. Only after you played uh, it actually sees that. So this was like a brilliant move almost. Because it forces the rook trade, right? It forces the rook trade like this. And I thought that this was a drawing endgame and that's why I went for it because I thought it was drawn but this is far from drawn black is completely winning and you might ask why because even though in this position our kings can't really get closer if we go back here I have a pawn break f5 and all of a sudden you know when he takes I take I have a passed pawn and even though it might be difficult for me to get the pat uh, the passed pawn rolling because you know he's um, in this position you know he's, he's controlling these squares and of course I don't want to push because then it's complete draw but I can like do weighty moves like for example h5 and if he goes b3 for example I can even go king e6 I think yeah I can go king e6 and after like king um, e4 we get uh, zooks, zooks wings or just you know opposition like here he, he has to go back or go to the side and whichever uh, way he goes for example there I go here and when he goes here um, I can go here he goes here and I do the same and I just push him back and even I can give up probably this pawn and go go grab these ones and you know it's just winning endgame but I wasn't looking at this and so after rook a3 I played rook d3 and here he played um, uh, king e2 which loses immediately to uh, rook takes a3 and the same idea, I have f5 here, and f5 is super strong, you know, because he meant, let's imagine he, he tries to to get a passer of his own, you know, I think I could just take, and he's not close enough for the pawn, you know, it, like my pawn promotes faster, and this is probably just winning for me, because I have all these pawns, and I, I'm pretty sure I can make a, a, a trade the queens or get all these pawns and stuff like that. But um, even then, actually, if we get to this position, I think I can bring my king over. And can he bring his king over in time? I mean, he can't really. Yeah, he can't because if he goes here, you know, I I go here. And, uh, you know, he, he doesn't have moves. Maybe he has this, actually. But I get here. Yeah, it's just a matter of calculation. But probably... I'm able to win this somehow. Hmm. Yeah, I just go here and 
yeah, I mean, it's just so far away, and I've passed pawns left, right, and center, so, yeah, but here, after rook d3, check, he played king e2, and I saw in my calculation that if he played this move, I had this rook b3 move that would draw the game, because I thought that, okay, after he takes, I take, and it's a draw, I thought this was a draw, because our kings can't come closer even though he gets this pawn it doesn't matter because like he can't get closer like he doesn't have any pawn breaks and neither do i so i thought but of course i had f5 and f5 would just win the game uh, with some effort for me and i had a lot of time on the clock but what happened then so after here I, after i played rook b3 he thought for 40 minutes the guy thought for 40 minutes and he offered a draw and I accepted and we drew the game and it's very sad. It's very very sad that I just like f5 I didn't even consider and like you have to consider at least the move like if the move is in the position you have to at least consider it I didn't consider it at all and it was just very 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 poor game by me i missed so many wins and honestly i think all of the missed wins were almost not all of them but most of them were due to my psychology you know not my psychology but my mentality going into the game you know i was happy with the draw and that's what i got i got a draw in a completely winning position and um I had more than time to think about the position, but as soon as I saw the draw, I was like, okay, I'm chill. I got the draw against a higher rated opponent, and it's so bad, it's so bad. It's I really have to, um, to work on that uh, mindset, because that mindset won't uh, get me far. And if I really want to get National Master, like, I can't be happy with these type of draws, you know? It's just not, uh, it's just not the, the way to go, you know, if you want to succeed in this field but yeah it is what it is we move forward try to learn with these experiences you know it, it hasn't happened once probably already twice or the third time i don't know but uh yeah the we just have to keep trying you know and keep uh, looking at these games and remembering that uh you know don't don't play for the draw always play for the win and yeah, it is what it is, guys. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.